Everyone, hi. This is a continuation of our lightness sculpting in Blender class, where we have been starting to work on an Emily Blunt lightness. Our goal for today's class is to take our head that's at about the 80% mark and to bring it over from 80% over to 90%. This is also what I like to call the second pass on a head, keeping in mind that we will do a total of three passes to capture the lightness properly. The closer we try to reach perfection in terms of our likeness, sometimes the further away it seems to get, like a bit of a mirage. And the more that the tiny little differences between our own sculpt and our reference start to magnify in our mind. So it's kind of normal as we develop a likeness that it seems as if we can never truly get there. So what we're going to do today for this second pass is that we're going to look at three different observation techniques that you can use to help you improve your sculpt. And then once we've covered those three different techniques, then we will apply those on our Emily Blunt likeness and we will bring our Emily Blunt likeness from 80% all the way to 90%. We are going to leverage the fact that Blender is a 3D software with true 3D cameras and we are going to create multiple viewports that give us different points of view over a face that will closely match some of the references that we have. And while we are sculpting over our head and trying to inch ourselves closer to our references, we will use those different viewports to have a simultaneous feedback as to whether we are going in the right direction or not. The second tool that we will talk about is anthropometry. And although we've already talked about that a little bit, in this particular instance, we will delve really, really deep into anthropometry we will do a very in-depth analysis of our facial measurements that we have. We will figure out where the key problems are and we will talk about how to go about solving them. Because sometimes it's a lot easier to figure out what are the anthropometrical problems than it is to go about solving them. And sometimes it can even feel that in the process of solving our anthropometrical issues that we have, that we are actually moving ourselves away from our likeness as opposed to moving ourselves towards it. And finally, the third tool that I will present to you is one that you probably already are aware of and that you perhaps even use on a regular basis, which is that we will simply overlay two different pictures. We will take a picture of our own 3D model, we will take a reference that we have, and we will simply overlay them and we will compare where the differences are. And I'm purposefully waiting a long time before I start to talk about that because this is one of those tools that people start to over rely on a little bit too much, like a bit of a crutch, a little bit like smoothing. When people learn about smoothing and if they start to smooth too early on in their own sculpting development, then that can become a crutch that actually holds them back from developing better tools that will help them create better results. So here we are, this is our Blender first pass that has been completed and we are now starting the second pass over this particular head. We'll use the quad view technique to have multiple viewpoints over our head as we begin sculpting on this. Here's our four views that I have selected. You can see that they're all slightly different than the uh, typical front view, side view profile, but that's all right. We still have a very complete picture over what we are trying to do here. You can see that we really don't have the same curve right now between our forehead on our 3D model and our reference. On our reference, the curve of the forehead, it seems, convex all the way throughout. Whereas on my case here, there seems to be a bit of a concavity to the curve of the forehead here from three quarters. So this is really what I want to start with. I want to start by trying to address that, try to get a curve to the forehead that matches the references a lot more. As we begin sculpting on this and improving this particular head, you can see that I have turned off symmetry because the further along that we get with a likeness, the more that the asymmetry in a face becomes important to really judge whether we have properly captured a likeness. The eyes, they feel as if they're a little too far forward, especially as we compare with the bottom of the views that we have here. Even though her eyes are closed, it's kind of obvious to me that the eyes need to be pulled back within the skull a little bit. And the other references that we have here also seem to suggest that if we look at this one here, it also feels as if the eye is just a little bit more cavernous than what I currently have. We can see our interpupillary distance at 5.43 centimeters. 
We have our head breadth here at uh, 15 centimeters. We, had our, we have our head length that is at about 19 centimeters or 18.8 centimeters or so in our case here. So the differences in terms of depth, in terms of height of the head, they're very minor. They're really not all that far off. But what's really, really concerning here is the fact that the interpupillary distance is 5.43 centimeters. And that is way, way lower than where it should be. And so that's a problem. So the question is, how do we move the eyes further away from each other by a few millimeters each and yet still keep the overall uh, proportions of the face. How do we go about doing that? Because that seems like uh, those two things are kind of in contradiction there. I do feel, and you may feel this too, that I've actually taken a step back in terms of how much my likeness sculpt looks like Emily Blunt. And that comes from all the changes that we have done around the eyes uh, and these sorts of things. And that's the that's the nature of that one step back, two steps forward that we have done. Because now we know that our perspective is much better. We've gotten rid of that uh, perspective distortion that we had over the face or that camera distortion. Now that we know that the interpupillary distance is good, that it is where it needs to be. We know now that our proportions are extremely solid here and look at how well that silhouette is matching here. So although we do seem to have lost a little bit of that likeness, we are much closer to the ground truth than where we were before. So bringing those subtle elements of the likeness back, bring that essence back within the face, really should be very simple to do from now on, now that we know that everything is exactly where it needs to be in terms of proportions. So that's going to be the goal for our third and last uh, pass over this particular likeness sculpt. We will talk about things like skin pores and all these things, of course, but that will be after we are done really nailing down the actual likeness and after we have done a retopology there. So that's going to be up next. So keep an eye out on the website for our future Blender classes. Thanks for watching, everyone. And until next time, take care.